Hello. We are going to discuss the multinomial hypothesis testing situation. So our scenario is, what is UW students' favorite genre of music? To answer this question, I asked 280 randomly selected UW students, what is your favorite genre of music? Classical, jazz, rock, or country? And the results are given. So first, to dissect this scenario and determine the correct test situation, we have one sample. We have one variable. And the level of measurement is categorical with more than two outcomes because the outcomes are classical jazz rock and country and so because we know there's one sample one variable categorical with two or more outcomes we know the test situation is multinomial now the multinomial test situation and the one sample portion test situation are the only two test situations that the number of outcomes matter. And so if we have one sample, one variable with categorical level measurement, and it's two outcomes, that's one sample proportion. But because we, in this case, we have more than two outcomes, it's a multinomial test situation. We also know from the scenario that is my question of interest. And so now that we know that the test situation is multinomial, we can determine the hypotheses. And the hypotheses for multinomial are always based on fair probability. And so recall P tilde is our symbol for fair probability, and it's one divided by the number of outcomes. So in this case, that's four is equal to 0 0.250. And so the null hypothesis is P equals the fair probability, or P tilde. So the null hypothesis is P equals 0 0.25. Now the alternative hypothesis in symbols is a little bit more complicated. And to keep it simple, we are just going to say not the null or not null. The hypotheses really for multinomial help us get this fair probability that we will use later. But we tend to think about the hypotheses in English more. And so the hypotheses in English for this scenario for the multinomial test situation is the music genres are equally favored by the UW students, and then the music genres are not equally favored by the UW students. The alternative hypothesis does not specify how they're not equally favored, just that the music genres are not equally favored by UW students. And so now that we have the hypotheses, we can determine the critical value. And the critical value for multinomial, we need to know the null distribution. And so the null distribution in the multinomial test situation case is the chi-square distribution. So that looks like the letter X, but it's got this tail right here, and that's the Greek letter chi, and then it's squared. And so... We know we're going to use the chi-square distribution for the multinomial test situation. And so what that means is we are going to go down and use this chi-square table to get the critical value. But as you can see, there is this delta or this degrees of freedom. And so we need to know the degrees of freedom or delta for the multinomial test situation. And 
delta in our case is the number of outcomes minus one. So that's how we get the degrees of freedom for the ones for the multinomial test situation. So in our case, that's four minus one. So that equals three. So we're now we are going to be in row three. And then in our class, we're always doing an alpha of 0.05. And so the critical value is the 7.815. So what that means is if we draw a number line with 0, 7.815, if the test statistic is greater than this 7.815, that's where I reject the null. And over here, if it's less than, is when we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And so now that we have the critical value, we can calculate the test statistic. And so we use that fair probability to get the test statistic. So let's do a little reminder. So classical has a frequency of 45. That means 45 of the students of the 280 said their favorite genre of music is classical. And similarly, 80 of the 200 said that their favorite genre of music is country. Well, those we are going to now refer to as observed frequencies. And so I'm going to write an O here and call these observed frequencies. And so we have classical is the 45, jazz is 55, rock is 100 and country is 80. And so we're giving this these frequencies a new letter, the letter O for observed frequencies. This is what we observed in the sample because we're going to calculate what's called the expected frequency. And so if you remember, from the null hypothesis, this P equals 0.25, which is using the fair probability of 0.25. Well, that's our assumption. Our null hypothesis is we this, this is what we assume. And so if we assume fair probability, what would we expect from these 280? Well, I'm going to take the 280 times 0 0.25, and I'm going to get 70. And that is the expected frequency. And so the expected frequency for the multinomial test situation is the sample size n times the fair probability. And so we're going to put an E here for our expected frequency as I would expect 70, 70, 70, and 70. So again, we observed 80 students. We observed 80 students who said their favorite genre of music is country out of the 280. Well, if the null hypothesis is true, if fair probability is true, then I should expect there to be 70 students of 280 that say country is their favorite genre of music. And because it's fair probability, everything is going to have the same expected value. So I would expect 70 students to pick classical and 70 to pick jazz and 70 to pick rock and 70 to pick country. So the observed frequencies, the O's, come from what we observe in the sample. The E, the expected frequency, is what we expect, assuming the null hypothesis, assuming the fair probability. 
And now we have what we need to calculate the test statistic. So the test statistic is the O's minus the E's squared divided by the E's. And then we are going to calculate the sum of these. Now, the easiest way to do this is in a table, as I've outlined down here. And so we put the observed frequencies, and then we have the expected frequencies. And then we just go through this formula. So we have O minus E. So I'm going to take the 45 minus the 70 to get a minus 25. 55 minus 70 gets me a minus 15. 100 minus 70 gets me 30. And 80 minus 70 gets me 10. Now, if we come here and we say sum, the observed frequencies are going to sum to the sample size. And the expected frequencies are also going to sum to the sample size. Well, the O minus E's are always going to sum to zero. So if you look at this, we've got a positive 40 and you've got a negative 40 sums to zero. So this is a good way to check that you've calculated your E correctly, your expected frequency, and that you've done your O minus E correctly because it will always sum to zero or at least it'll sum to zero within rounding. And then the last thing we can do is we can go O minus E squared divided by E. So I'm going to take this negative 25, I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to divide it by 70. And so when I do that, I get an 8.9286. Three point two one four three twelve point eight five seven one. Oops, that didn't come out very good. Twelve point eight five seven one, and then the last one is one point four two eight six. And then how we get the test statistic is we take the sum of these values and that gets to a 20, oops, 26.4286. Now, some people might be asking, can I just skip, once I get O, E, can I just skip to this last one? And the answer is no, because we might have to use these O minus E's in the conclusion. And so don't skip this O minus E step. You are going to need, potentially need to use that later, depending upon if we reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. But so the test statistic equals 26.4286. So now that we have the test statistic, we can get the probability statement for the p-value. And so it's going to be a probability, but I'm not going to use z anymore because z, or standard normal, is not the null distribution. The null distribution, as we just discussed, is chi-square. And so I'm going to use chi-square greater than the test statistic value. And so in our case, the probability statement is chi-square is greater than 26.4286. Now, you would need a computer to determine this actual p-value. We don't have a table to look this up, but this is how you get the probability statement for the p-value in the multinomial test situation. And so now we are going to use the test statistic to determine our statistical decision. And so we are going to reject the null because 
26.4286 is greater than 7.8, and let's come back and look, 815. So remember, that was our critical value. 815. So we're going to reject because the test statistic is greater than the critical value. And then the conclusion is, or the interpretation, is we're going to conclude the alternative in English. I conclude that the music genres are not equally favored by the UW students. And then this is where we're going to use the O minus E values. And so if we come back up, we are going to look at the largest and the smallest O minus E values. And so this 30 means more than we expected of the students picked rock and less than we expected of the students picked classical. And so that's where we get a statement. Specifically, UW students prefer rock music and do not prefer classical music. And so that's how we're going to interpret the O minus E values. We're going to do the largest and the smallest. So again, we're concluding the alternative in English. Because we rejected the null hypothesis, we're concluding the alternative in English, and then we are giving the largest O minus E value and the smallest. UW students prefer rock music and do not prefer classical music.